Now let's see how we can solve the minimization problem for the cobb douglas production function using a little bit of calculus. So say you knew the production function for a firm had the form, uh, the following form, q equals l to the power of 6 and k to the power of 4. So in this case we, uh, we do know the outputs elasticities of um, labor and capital. And say so you also knew the prices of labor and capital and the price of labor was $5 and the price of capital was actually ten dollars. And say that what you wanted to find out is what is the, the minimizing quantities of labor and capital to produce 100 units of output. And what you're looking for here is the minimizing quantities of labor and capital you will need to produce this amount of output. Well the first thing you need to use is the minimizing cost equation you found um, already and this is what we derived in the previous video and that is when the firm minimizing costs the ratio of the margin productivity, which is the slope of the isoquant, or the margin rate of technical substitution, is equal to the ratio of the prices. Now, we also have derived the ratio of the margin productivity of labor and capital for a typical Caldogan production function. And we have said that this ratio, the margin productivity of labor uh, to capital, which is the slope of the isoquant, was actually equal to um, the exponent, the output elasticity of labor times the capital, and the output elasticity of uh, capital times the labor. And since we know the values of those uh, exponents, we can just plug that in here. So this is k, and this is 0.4 l. So basically, we know that the ratio of the margin of productivity is given these numbers that we were given is 1.5 k over l. The slope of the isoquant is equal to 1.5 k over l. So now we can replace that uh, for this term right here in the minimizing cost equation, and we know that 1.5k uh, over L is going to be equal to the ratio of the prices. We have a value for W is 5, and we have a w, the value for R is 10. So the minimizing cost equation for this problem is going to be equal to this. Now we can further simplify this by kind of cross-multiplying here, and we end up with L equals uh, 3 Okay, so what this, this is the minimizing cost equation uh, for this particular problem. All right, let's do, that in, um, let's do that in red here. So what we said is that this simplifies to L equals 3K, and this is the minimizing cost equation for this problem. This comes directly from here. All right. So now we have basically two equations, one, and two, and also only two unknowns, because we know Q, Q is 100. So all we have to do is to put one on, on, on the other to solve, right? So let's start with, with this one, right? Well, let's start with 100 equals, well, L is 3K. So instead of L, we're going to put 3K to the power of 0.6 and K to the power of 0.4. And we can solve this equation for L. All right, let's uh, create a little space here so we don't have to go to another page. We can solve this equation for, uh, for k. Um, k is going to be equal to uh, 52, if we round. And so when we, uh, uh, once we found k, we can simply take the k. Uh, we know that L is 3 times k, so L is going to be equal to 156. So that's, um, that's how we found the, va the values of capital and labor that minimizes the cost of production is uh, 52 capital and 156 labor. Uh, that makes uh, kind of sense because the price of labor is, uh, has a higher output elasticity and it's also cheaper, so you're going to use a lot more labor. Uh, capital has a, a smaller output elasticity and it's also more expensive, so you're going to use a lot less capital uh, to minimize costs.